Peter, welcome back to our look ahead to the start of the new SSC air uh, season. Felix Ely and Kevin McHugh are with me in the studio. And Felix Dundalk, uh, reigning league champion Stephen Kenny, is already suggesting that uh, perhaps uh, the feeling is that Dundalk will be will do well to retain their title this year, that this could be their most difficult season in terms of trying to win the league for a few seasons because the other clubs are beginning to close in Cork City, perhaps Shamrock Rovers even. Well, I think Stephen Kelly would say that yeah, if I was in his position, that's what I would be saying. Uh, I don't think there's any... The Stephen Kenny's problem is the players he lost. You know, when you look over the last the last couple of years, he's lost a couple who've gone to Preston. How you, how you replace them? You know, Andy Boyle and, and uh, Hogan have gone. There's talk that Hogan's going to make, possibly make the, the the Republic of Ireland. You know, make his debut there soon. Uh, there's there's also Ronan Finn uh, going back to to Sean McGrover. So there's three three guys and, and toil the year before. It's how Stephen Kenny consolidates what he has as opposed to everybody else playing catch up. I mean there's comments and goings at Cork and there's comments and going, you know, Shamrock Rovers it, it sort of seem to be uh, like one or two other there's always somebody that's gonna throw some money at, at a football club at any given time and particularly with Rovers the way they are, you know, the League of Ireland it's better when Shamrock Rovers are doing well. Mm. And no doubt about that. It's better when Shamrock Rovers are doing better. There's more people that go to matches and, and everything else and, and gives the whole league up, whether you like it or whether you don't, which you're not going to get at some clubs. Uh, it's how Stephen Kenny tries to, to maintain what he has. I don't think that anybody, everybody else will be that much better. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'll be that much better because to be perfectly honest there's not a great bunch of talent there and no matter what I'm talking about the different levels there, the levels of Stephen Kenny, Kenny Shields and all the, the levels at the top aren't particularly brilliant mm-hmm. so if you can get your own team right which has been the case with Stephen Kenny if you can get your own team right there isn't a great deal else to be beat mm-hmm. That's always been the case in football. If you can get your own team right, which and he's the best manager in the league, if he can get his own team right, it's keeping the hunger there, Dermot. Mm-hmm. It's keeping the hunger in the players that he has and just bring in one or two others. It is, yes, it is going to be difficult to replace those other guys, but it's keeping the hunger within the squad that he has because when you've won the leagues that they've won, and you've achieved what they've had over the last couple of years. Once you lose that real desire to win, it can be the difference in 10, 15, 20 points a year. And it's the difference between you being champions when you've been third or fourth. And that's the challenge for him. And it's a challenge for everybody that wins. Mm. And when you've won twice, there's a very good reason why people on this countries don't win a lot of leagues all the time. The reason is is that when you win, people get greedy and they don't have the same enthusiasm. And that's what Stephen Kenny did remarkably well last year when, when they won the league and, and won it quite well. Although I do think that Cork, Cork over the last couple of years have suffered where they've had a basis of people who've gone to England and come back and they had four or five players who were all older, experienced guys, and they got to a stage that come, come August, they ran out of steam. Yeah. And John Caulfield has tried to bring in some new blood and new legs. Um, but having said that, Shamrock Rovers have th- seen to be trying to, to go with that extra mile. How will Stephen Bradley fare out? Whoever else is pulling the strings at Rovers, how they're all going to marry it together because they've brought in an awful lot of new players. And it's very difficult unless you're really, really top class players in a top class yeah. system. Shamrock Rovers haven't done that before, have how, they? How that's all going to marry. Mm. Uh, and it takes you time, even it does. Uh, my feeling is that if Stephen Kenny uh, can just consolidate in what he has, they're going to be hard to beat. Yeah. But if I was him, I'd be saying the same thing. Well, Kevin. 
Shamrock Rovers, Felix mentioned them. Mm. They really flattered to deceive this last couple of seasons. Yeah. St. Pat's always promised so much. They have a big year ahead of them. You may say Bowes as well. You know, given the structures they have, they could be doing so much better. Perhaps Sligo Rovers could be included in that. No, I wouldn't include St. Pat's or Sligo anywhere near the top. I think the three that Felix mentioned are Dundalk, Cork and Shamrock Rovers. Mm -hmm. And I think Shamrock Rovers will come probably a, a long way out in third. Um, which I think it's between Cork and Dundalk. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose the one thing Stephen has done really well over the last couple of years when he's lost likes of Towel, he went and signed uh, Robbie Benson and Patrick McElhinney. He usually he likes to, if he can't get one to replace one, he likes to sign in two players that can maybe take the take the pressure off. And, and he done the same this year when he's lost Horgan. He's from Michael Duffy and young boy Clifford from he has, the yeah. Chelsea youth player. So that's what, what, he, what he's was done the story? What was the story with Ronan Finn? I'm not I sure. That was I wasn't crossed. It was a strange. Yeah, that was. I know he's a Shamrock Rovers fan, and that's where he's from. But that was a that was a big one to me. It obviously, was nothing to do with money because uh, Dundalk's budget, I would say, could stretch as far as they wanted to. But that was a strange one. Well, he went. And he he went almost. Oh, just he was right away. That, was that over, took yeah. Stephen by surprise. Yeah. I can tell by his interviews yeah. uh, on the paper that really, I think, it really hurt him because. Well, you see, that that would suggest that would suggest to me that that somebody at Rovers is paying money. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The I mean, that would suggest to me, if it was if it was done and, uh, and dusted it was like that, uh, I, I know Stephen Kenny's a big fan of Ronan Finn, and, he, and he's wanted him for quite a while before he got him at Dundalk, because the way that, that Stephen worked, he wanted him in the team. Uh, so for him to leave the double champions in, in Europe and everything else and, and go to Shamrock Rovers you don't do that mm. unless you're Mark Clattenburg going to Saudi Arabia yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. okay. do, do, do you think the big long season as well that they nearly touched 60 games I yeah. think that has to come into play this season True. I don't like you can personally say it and talk it around the change room that you have the hunger and we're going to do this but yeah it's a long campaign as, as maybe mentally I think it could be a wee bit too much for them and I do fancy Cork they want it this year with the signings they've made as well Young McCormick and Qhan and, mm -hmm. and your man champion coming in from Sligo, they are they're really, really good top signing. So Can I ask you about Sligo Rovers, Kevin? Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave Robertson it's a it's a new season for him, a new a new challenge for Sligo Rovers. They have new players in as well. A couple of Donegal signings, Sean mm -hmm. Patton, the goalkeeper, Kyle Callan McFadden. Mm -hmm. Have Sligo got two good players? They've got two really good players, um with obviously potential. But is that what Sligo needs right away? I don't think so. I think they need players that are coming in nearly proven. For the last four or five years, Sligo's been used to winning cups and been up around the top and maybe won the league four years ago. So I think the fans are expecting a minimum of Europe. Um, but I think they're a million miles away from it. Um, with the players that they've lost and the players they brought in, they're good young players and it may take them a couple of years to they, they develop into top players. But I think Sligo need players that are already proven. Um, I, I, I can't see them fighting for a European place this year. Um, I think Bray are more equipped. They, yeah. they, they, push, they push on this year. Um, looking at the clubs, looking at, the, as I call it, the stairs of the bottom three race, uh, there's about at least seven clubs involved, including, obviously, we, our own club, Van Harps involved. But I think Sligo will be dragged into that. Bowes yeah. will be dragged into that. And then obviously you've got Trahara, Limerick and Galway on top of that. So Yeah, well I did suggest to, to Ollie Horgan and I don't think he took the the, the question too well but I, I suggested to him that Harps supporters last year were looking at Longford Town and Wexford mm -hmm. and if Harps could stay above those two, you know, that was their challenge last year. Yeah. This year, uh, you know, Limerick are coming up from the first division. They are well set up in terms of their structures and finance and squad. But, well, but do you reckon there would be, could be as many as six or seven? I have no doubt about it. I yeah. think a lot of those clubs that voted for this 10-team league are are going to be maybe thinking in three or four months, thinking, oh, Christ, should yeah. we have done this? Because they're going to be dragged in. There's no doubt about it. Now, looking at the budgets, there's no doubt about it. Van Harps has got the smallest budget of everybody in the league. Um, so if you already do the league out in paper, yes, you could value it, Van Harps, but... Um, knowing Ollie as I know Ollie well and, and Higsey they'll be up for that challenge it's right down their street to be relegated before a ball is kicked they'll love that kind of carry on and they'll love motivating the players and that gives them something to prove hmm. um, obviously you have, you have your Corks and Rovers not going for the league but that's 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 a, an incentive on its own to try yeah. and stay out of that bottom three as Felix says it's going to be a massive task massive task yeah. but um, a lot of those clubs there I'm looking around 
Um, obviously, some parts were able to keep Christy Fagan and teams like that, and that will help them um, stay out of that bottom gap. But do I see them fighting for the title? No, but I do see the likes of Sligo and Drogheda being dragged under. Mm. Interesting. Well, Felix, the, the the new structures that are in place, you know, there's people have opinions. There's a lot of disillusionment. Um, I don't even think the first division clubs were were consulted on this process. Yes, uh, is that something that we should be surprised about? No. No, nothing should surprise you with, with the FEI. I, I remember interviewing uh, Frank Gavin on Satanta Sports one night uh, before a before game at St Pat's and all the Sligo Rovers people, Sligo were playing St Pat's and all the Sligo Rovers, uh, the chairman and, and a few of their uh, people on their selection committee or whatever committee it was at the time, and they were bombarding me with questions to put to Frank Gavin before the programme even started. And when I interviewed Fran, I was able to tell Fran things about the FBI that Fran didn't know. Uh, and uh, that does not surprise you. That's been the case forevermore. I mean, a lot of people suggest the FBI put up with the League of Ireland. It's their only interest in the international setup, and, and there, there's some grounds to it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. There's some grounds to it. As far as some of the people are there, it, it is... It is... They're more into the international setup. The w- the one thing that I've always said, and I've said this, I've said this even when when I was managing at the Brandywell uh, a long time ago, and I've said this at Harps, and I've said it on many occasions here. A lot of the problems within League of Ireland football have been caused by the clubs. Mm. It's been caused by the clubs. It's the clubs who are spending money they don't have. It's not the it's not the FEI. It's not the League of Ireland committees going back when it was a separate entity. It's the clubs who have been causing their own problems. There's no doubt. Many teams are in the, the Premier Division this year. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve. 12. Right. Okay. I will guarantee you that there's probably three of them who can p- actually pay what they're supposed to be able to pay. Everybody else on a weekly basis is looking for scraps here, scraps there, trying to pay wages, trying to do this, that and the other. You know, when I, when I was appointed the house manager, uh, um, I was at Gary Beckett's wedding, and I got a phone call in, and, and uh, Higgsy was at the same wedding, and him and I were, were, were chatting afterwards when, when you... But my first match was, was the following night in the Brandywell against Derry. And I didn't even know who the vast majority of players were. But the first time I met the, the entire Harps bo- players, I asked them could they go without their wages for two weeks. Yeah. That was the first thing I said to the players. No, nothing's changed. Yeah. Nothing's changed. And you can criticise all you like of the FEI. There are serious problems within the FEI in terms of the League of Ireland. But it's the clubs themselves who have created the problems, mm-hmm. Jeremy. But surely things have improved, Felix. Have they? Mm. Have they? I'm not sure that they have. Mm. Because all it takes is what's happening at Waterford. Yeah. Somebody's come in and thinks they're going to reinvent the wheel. They've struck oil down at Waterford. Pat Fenlon's in as the new CEO, director of football, Alan Rellins, and they're paying one or two players. I haven't found out, but they're paying players. It's outrageous. Mm. To do what? Because you run around chasing your tail, but it's a different that that to a certain extent, Jeremy, is is going off on a tangent, which I tend to do at times. Mm. But a lot of the problems within the FEI get a lot of flack, but an awful lot of the problems within League of Ireland football, and it's been the case for thirty years, have been the clubs themselves. Okay, they're paying out money they don't have, and it's been the case at at Finn Park, and it's been the case at the Brandywell. They've been paying out what they don't have. Yeah, can I ask you? We we'll probably need to be winding up fairly soon, but Ken, oh, Ken. Oh, <laughs> I was just getting started. There, You're only right? getting going, Felix. <coughs> a lot of talk about, and a lot of people wondering about the future of, of Paddy McCourt. He's a player that both of you guys know very well. He's not with any club. He's a free agent. Some suggestions that Harps might still be involved in terms of a, of, a, of, a, of what would be a surprise move for Paddy McCourt. Is that something that could happen? I'd be very surprised if, if Paddy took up that offer to be honest. Is he the answer for, for Harpsham that they're going to need? I doubt it. 
Um, he would have been probably should have the likes of Dundalk um, when they were going to be in top in games. Mm. Um, but only Paddy can answer that. I'm not sure Paddy's come back home now. I'm not sure he has the hunger to play. Yeah. And, and he, he knows the weight of League Ireland as well as anybody, and it's, it's unforgiving. And whether if you if you don't have that hunger, um, you end up making a nonsense of yourself. So I, I don't know. I don't. I can't see Paddy coming back playing. To be honest. Yeah. Well, he would. He, he would. He had his own personal problems with the he um, his wife and that, and that's why he's he's come back home. So I think I think he wants to take a break from football. You know. Yeah. Cause well, like, if if, pa- if I mean if, if the ball wasn't if, if Paddy McCord had a choice, he'd go to Dundalk. Mm-hmm. If he hasn't signed for Dundalk, then there has to be a very good reason. Stephen Kenny doesn't want him, yeah. doesn't need him, doesn't, doesn't think he's going to add anything to it. If you look at what Paddy's done over the last four or five years, he's played a couple of games here, he's played a couple of games there, he's injured, he's played a couple of games here, and he's not he's not a spring chicken anymore. He's the last thing Harps need. All right. He's the last thing Harps need, I think. I, I, I believe there was talks the week before last. I'm very surprised that that happened because I would have thought it would have been a non-starter. I don't think um, Paddy McCord, for me, at this minute in time, has got to go into a good team, a really good team that's going to play and need somebody that's going to produce something at the end of it. Harps is going to be a team that's going to be dogged, hard-working, hard to break down and hit people in the brick. You don't want Paddy in your team. Well, are Harps good enough to stay up, Felix? The million dollar question. Well, Kevin thinks there's going to be a, f- a few teams involved in this. I'm, I'm not too sure there'll be as many as seven. Mm-hmm. There'll be the usual three tier. There will always be somebody who will do better than expected. One or two who won't do as well as, as will go the other way. Again, I'll go back to the same thing as I said last year. How do they start the season? You've seen the way that when the wheels come off last year, it was a real, real struggle. And eventually clung on. If they start well this year, you never know. Yeah. You never know, but it is going to be incredibly. It's more. Di- it's, it's obviously going to be a lot more difficult this year than it was last year. Home, home farm is going to be key. Yeah, well, you you'll be there to watch them, Kevin. I'm sack sure. Sackler gr- right. sack grounds, man. Yeah, yeah home you, farm is going to be key. It's a new. Um, it's a new. It's a new situation for yourself too, because you're involved now at, at underage level with Harps, and you're back playing again. Also, senior, not in the Donegal League Premier Division. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we well, can wish you good luck with that. <laughs> I'm no, sure you I play good surfaces there. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. But I think it's key as well. If, if, if they can keep those 12 to 14 players fit, um, that's massive. Like, uh, two or three injuries, and Ollie, Ollie, Ollie's going to have no choice but throw in 19 year olds. Now, sometimes, as Felix knows, sometimes you throw in young fellas, they, they end up coming up trumps yeah. nine times out of ten. Um, so some, maybe that's what the, the, one, on. the, the one guy, the one thing I wanted to say is this the best defender there has been at Finn Harps for the last ten years is no longer there. It's Keith Cowan. Okay. People tell me Keith Cowan can't do this and he can't do that and he can't do this. Nobody has ever been picked for what they can't do. Mm-hmm. Keith Cowan's an out and out defender, big lad will always do this as honest as a day's long and he's a defender he's a defender um, and and he's yeah, going to be missed be, he'll be a big loss and yeah. he's going to be missed this year I'm telling you he's I'm right in saying he was one of your signings when you were at Harps well I, I I like Keith I mean I, I when I won the league at Derry the one of the first people I signed is uh, the, I signed when the boss man came in I signed Gavin Dykes in March when he played his first match for Derry in August but I had literally signed him in March, and I wanted Gavin Dykes in because he was the best defender in the country. Now, Dykes, he used to say, don't give me the ball. Yeah. I don't want the ball. I'm not interested in the ball. The best defender that's been in the League of Ireland the last 40 years was Dermot Keeley. Couldn't pass water. Mm-hmm. But he was the best defender because he organised everybody else. Jim McLaughlin, he asked Jim to pick his best team in League of Ireland history, first man on his team was Claire McKeeley, because mm. he organises everybody else. I'm not saying that Keith Cowan can organise everybody else, but he doesn't have to defend. 
Kevin, you played against, well, trained with Keith Cowan and played against him, I'm sure, many as a night in training. Well, yeah. A tough, a tough, teak tough defender. Yes, he's, he's a big, strong lad. He's, he's well put together. He's quick for a defender, which you don't usually have. Um, <laughs> he, there's no doubt about it. And as the year went on, he definitely matured as a Premier Division footballer, and there's no doubt about it. If he was fit, all he could have maybe had something on his hands to, to keep him. I would say other clubs would have been looking at him, but yeah. he will be a big loss. Uh, yeah. And there was a few other people who who hid behind him a bit, you know. Yeah. But yeah. you know, come on, you're right. Yeah. Come, to stop hiding in there, you know. Yeah. Okay. Go and help him. You know, and they're going to have to step up the plate. So a couple of people there who have re-signed, who are not kids anymore, yeah, and they didn't have great years. And if and if Harps are going to stay up, they're going to have to have some of those guys. Come on, let's see if you really want to play and yeah. and show. You know, you've got ability, but it ain't just a piece here. And you said this enough. It's not what you have; it's what you do. What you have. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see how things progress over the next uh, few weeks and months. The new season almost upon us. It all kicks off next uh, Friday night. Harps at home to Cork City in their first game. Derry away to Bohemians in their first match. And uh, we can just say thanks very much to Felix Healy and Kevin McHugh for joining us this evening for what was a very enjoyable look ahead to the new SSE Air Trusty campaign. From myself, Jeremy Doherty, thanks for listening.